welcome to Net Zero. This is Levin Yelenda from Lusaka, Zambia. The world loses about 15 billion trees a year. Conserving, restoring, and growing new trees helps our biodiversity and fight climate change. What solution are thought leaders in Africa using to reverse the loss of trees, which is critical to the health of the country? Uh, today, I am pleased to welcome Dr. Susan Chomba, who is the Director of Vital Landscapes for Africa at the World Resource Institute. Welcome to Net Zero, Dr. Susan. Thank you. I would love to find out as, as we start this interview uh, from your experience, you working with uh, large restoring, restoration projects in Africa. So uh, what do you think are the main drivers to their success and also the challenges, the key, the key challenges they do face? Indeed, there's a lot of forestation and reforestation projects happening across many parts of Africa, in many countries, in many communities. We are seeing huge rallies and huge calls around tree planting and tree growing. Some of the key factors for success, the first one and the most important one is to be able to ask, to answer the question, why are we restoring this landscape? So the question of why, what kind of ecosystem functions do we want to see? Because sometimes when we are planting trees or re restoring lands, every stakeholder, whether it's communities or it's a government a, a partner or it's a private sector or it's an investor, we have different objectives in mind and we don't take the time to discuss why is it that we are restoring this land? Uh, I, know, I know in recent years, it has been noted that uh, these uh, forest projects, uh, they've been failing or unable to adequately address both uh, social and uh, ecological issues. Why do you think it is like that? Then also in your area, you as, as the director, how do you manage to overcome such issues? One of the key issues that we see when you're designing a project, we don't have enough time to engage and to get local knowledge. Take for instance, you know, a lot of us, you sit in an office, you write a proposal, we are going to restore this place in Zambia. Maybe even I've never been to Zambia. The, the most I know from Zambia is probably from my geography, you know, in school. And also I'm assuming that because I'm African, the villages I'm going to encounter in Zambia, I'm going to encounter something similar to what I've seen in my place, right? So I come there with a lot of misconceptions. I come there with very little knowledge uh, about the ecosystem, about the people. I think for any successful projects, people need to invest enough in understanding that context in terms of its bio, ecological context, as well as the social cultural norms of the people that you're working with. I really want also to understand something. I know here in Africa, when we talk of the issue of technology, but also I know you understand the issue of uh, artificial intelligence, also big data, set right. And uh, drones have been useful also in the process of what in the way in the effort of uh, reforestation. So I don't know how how do you think these technologies they are supporting this work uh, in forestation, especially here in Africa. Technology is good. It's good because through technology, as you say, we can be able to do rapid assessments. For instance, of uh, areas where we're having deforestation. For instance, WRI, the organization that I work for is very, very big on technology. Uh, we are able, for instance, to monitor near real-time deforestation using, um, you know, there's a, there's a tool that is available on the, on the web that is called the Global Forest Watch. You know, this uses big data and it can be able to synthesize big data very quickly, tell you near real-time real deforestation trends in places where we are using it. You know, if, if technology remains something that is made in the West, and then it's only applied in Africa and we are just operating whatever is made, it makes the inequality divide bigger. If, for instance, it's areas that do not need tree planting, there are areas where you can do natural regeneration, farmers can do natural regeneration, you don't need to bring your drone there to plant trees. So again, what, what, where should technology be applied? If you have areas, for instance, where we have a lot of unemployment and, um, and, and, and maybe you know, using nature, we can be able to create employment. Why would I use a drone, for instance, to come and plant trees in a village in Zambia when there are so many Zambian youth who would be um, uh, you know, uh, unemployed? And I'm using this case, Levy, just because you're Zambian. It doesn't mean it's any better in Kenya. It's the same thing I ask. You know, why would I use a drone to plant trees in Kenya uh, to plant huge areas when I could actually engage youth and local communities and therefore build a sense of ownership, provide job opportunities for them? You know, and, and, and they will look after these trees long after the technology of trans tree planting has gone. Apart from uh, reforestation of land, uh, proper management of uh, reforestation of or reforestation, 
restoration of forest and also the planting of trees and proper management of forest. Uh, what other in initiative would you recommend or activities would you recommend that can help um, Africa specifically to reduce the carbon emission? Okay, so first of all, let me start here. Uh, Africa contributes less about 4% of total global greenhouse gas emissions as a continent. At the moment, our burden is not on reducing carbon emissions per se. Our burden is adapting to a rapidly changing climate. Our first starting point is to adapt. That's why you are hearing about um, you know, just transitions because basically African farmers, smallholder farmers are struggling with drought, they are struggling with flooding, they are struggling to adapt to a rapidly changing climate that they did very little to contribute to. If we want big carbon emission, emission reductions, that has to come from industrialized countries, that has to come from countries that have historically been big emitters, that have currently are still using a lot of fossil fuels that are contributing a lot of greenhouse gas emissions. If, for instance, if you actually got rid of, if we cleared the Congo forest you can forget about farming even in Ethiopia. It, the, the hydrological functions around the continent are so interconnected that if we lose our own uh, nat remaining natural forests, we will also be losing our own livelihood. So it's, it's a very complex thing and we need to embark on protecting the remaining ecosystems. If we don't have climate resilient development pathways, then our agriculture systems, our, our, our transport systems, our house energy systems, they are all to be you know, we are going to have a pathway that will be emitting a lot. We need to shift to those kind of uh, development pathways, whether it's in the transport, whether it's in food production, whether it's in energy, that are actually clean so that we don't really mess up the planet. Thank you very much. I'm Levi Nilenda. I add my voice to the voice of my Net Zero International Youth Peers to monitor the action of our world leaders to achieve their Net Zero commitment. Thank you very much.